Good morning, everybody. Waiting for us to go live here. I think it always goes live before I think it is. There we go. All right. Good morning. Um, had a couple of you reach out and ask me when we were going to wrap up our question and answer. And you guys have uh, continued to ask questions. So I have 30 minutes for this morning. We'll get through as much as we can and we'll just kind of like continue it on. I also have a part three of this webinar coming. Um, we're getting ready to go back to school here. So um, two workshops going, two classes, two different years of teacher training. So I will do my best to fit in this, this webinar. Um, this this channeled webinar that I'm doing is um, it's uh, it's ever changing because the um, the world is ever changing. You know, every time one of us gets our vibrational shit together, we change the direction and the outcome of our future. So every thought you think, whether it's fear or love, that should be the question that you're asking yourself every single day. Is 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 my life in the, moving in the direction of love or is my life moving in the direction of fear? And you really need to more than ever, hold yourself accountable to that question several, 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 several times a day because you are building a world out of your chronic thinking and your feeling and your behavior. So if you're like, I'm positive, but your behavior mimics that which is a fear, you are actually vibrating fear. So, um, all right, a couple announcements before I dive in. You guys, I'm doing my best to get us off of Facebook. Um, as the world moves and shifts and changes, you know, everything that we've kind of held dear to our ourselves and utilized to connect in the world has been um, basically owned by corruption. So as we kind of change hands and like, you know, thank goodness we have our internet so that we can stay connected and the powers that be on the team of the light are, are doing everything possible to not censor you being able to communicate. So just know that that if if and when things really start to kind of shift and move in the path of least resistance, which is always how it will appear to your human brain, um, we will be moving away from flowing energy and power to a suppressive um, operation. So I'm doing my best to get us off Facebook and house everything that we're doing as a collective, my life coaching certification, my Tika classroom, you know, all of my seven, 8,000 hours of archived material that I have over the years, all of my certifications, all my training, all of those things, all my Q and A's we're moving and have thanks to my team and Frank, obviously getting everything off of Facebook and getting it housed in our own kind of server which has not been an easy task because Facebook has been such an easy place for us to, you know, tap in, communicate and thrive together. But we don't really want to flow power to censorship. We don't want to be censored. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to have a wrong keyword pop up in one of my videos and have it disappear. And, and I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that happening. I just, I don't want to deal with having to hold that vibration crew going, you know, crew as well. I want everything to just be in our space. So with that being said, this is where you come in. Um, you know, you guys have witnessed a lot of shifts and changes in my TICA orga organization over the last six, seven years. And, you know, things have kind of changed hands. But one thing that's been consistent is we've always had our TICA classroom here on Facebook. Um, that is moving. So, and the, so the way that everything is, um, operated and function will be uh, what much more professional, which means you guys won't be, you know, getting a notice every month and getting your credit card debited through this and then having to access and let me know what's going on over here. It's always been kind of like a outsourcing process to get everything done for our subscription group. So what we've done is we've created the subscription group on our website. And so what you guys are going to have to do, the ones who have not done this yet, I know you have physical adulting homework, is you actually need to go in and you need to cancel your debit card auto draft that's connected to this account. And then go into the website and basically become a Tika member. Some of you guys will lose. That's fine. 
What I want is team players who are going to DIY this journey on their own, and I want to provide as much guidance and clarity as I can in this platform. Um, I give a lot of time in this class, considering what you guys are paying, and so I feel that this is a valuable product that I'm delivering right now. So if you feel the same way, please honor yourself and me, and you have to turn off your debit card. You can't call Frank and say, turn off my credit card. You have to go do that, okay? You have to go do that. Unless you've already done it and you're already gone through the new Jessica Alstrom website, you don't need to do that. But if you haven't, if you've been paying PayPal over here or this person over there, you need to make sure that you stop your credit card and maybe even um, I can have Julie kind of write up a little something to post just so you can, if you didn't watch this, she, you, you'll be able to follow the prompt. It's pretty easy. You're just gonna go into the Chica Access Group. Chica Ask Access Group is going to give you basically the archives of this, of, of this classroom and all of my new content. Um, and I will always provide in this classroom. Okay, so that's your homework. All right, let's get into the question and answers here. There are a lot. And let me remember where we left off. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Barb. Um, Okay, so she says, hi Jess, I just finished reading, rereading Dufresneau's description of a planetary shift, which he points out we've been through before. He gives an example of one, also pointing out this next one may be different. The magnetic poles have weakened, maybe a magnetic pole shift or a reset in a couple of months to a few years of people being affected by geomagnet Genetics, which looks like people acting kind of crazy, social systems collapsing, start market crash, martial law, etc. Sounds like we are in that phase. He makes a point that during this phase that preparing on a physical plane like burying food isn't really all that helpful because we're shifting to a different dimension where 3D objects and our normal 3D world will no longer exist that our five, six hour before the shift dimension overlap, we will see colors, things appear and disappear. His point, he points out that some synthetic materials not found in nature will also not exist. So I can imagine it may look like our world is crumbling. He recommends at this point that we should go into nature and go inward into our Merkaba the last phase of our moving through the void as we move into a higher dimension also pointed out that we come into the new dimension as a baby but quickly grow. Another thing which I thought fascinating was the stone scared sites, sacred sites, pyramids um, aren't primitive but built out of natural material that survives intact to shift. Can you continue to speak on our job as our world is unraveling? Are we to are we to calm the masses in the physical world or sit in meditation or somehow do both? Okay. Oh, I missed um, Michelle's. Michelle, I'll hop over and get yours right after this one. Okay, I'll get yours right next. Okay, so there's a lot there. I might only have time to do two today, but we'll see. Okay, so there's so much to that. And honestly, you guys have to understand that if you watch my last Q&A, Everything I said in that last Q&A is completely on point with this question, okay? So the way your physical brains are going to see this shift is going to feel like the path of least resistance. It's gonna feel like the next logical step because your brain is a fluid, it's a fluid, it's running in a fluid hypnosis of your arbitrary archetype, okay? So you will not physically see this go boom, and then, you know, you this will go fall down and then something else will pop up in its place. The reason why is because you've designed a more flowing reality within your, your body and mindset. Now, some of you are that are extremely clairvoyant and extremely in touch with, you know, both worlds. If you're too spiritual or too human, you won't see this shift. 
But if you're on the zero point frequency, if you're part of the queue, if you're part of the quantum shift that is happening, if you're right there in the zero point, you will and already have seen the glitches. You will already witness the changes in the skies. You will feel the difference in vibration. You will begin to smell and sense color on a whole new level. But because your process of transformation where he said you would be a baby, you would be returning to the idea of the inner child. And the, inner, and the idea of the inner child is that we will begin to move back into the theta brain. And the theta brain will move us into that sleep imagination space where things are happening all around you, big changes, but you're not using critical thinking and judgment to discern and decide what you're seeing so it will look normal. Like last night's dream when you're, you know, talking to so-and-so you haven't seen in years, yet it felt totally normal. And everything that was happening in your dream felt totally normal until you waked, woke up and realized that it wasn't. So how it will all happen is it will be in a state, a theta space. As soon as you move your vibration back into love, you will return to the inner child. The inner child will spend the next seven years in theta. So the resurrection of the child that I talked about in March, the resurrection of your vision quest that you're deep down in to start in January of 2020 will help you create that flawless shift, which means you know, you'll pay money for a shiny new toy that you decide to buy, and in return, your bank account will start filling up with different types of energy. It will not be like an adult having to use critical thinking to decide which where they look and which is going to fall. And you, as a child, the more you start to act like a child and treat the child with love and rescue the child from underneath the depths of your own unconscious mind and give your child everything that they need and want and thrive. When you sit in meditation, when you sit in your own guidance, when you listen to your own soul, when you listen to your own heart, when you trust your own gut, that is when your shift will be created. Because your shift will look different than my shift, my shift will look different than so-and-so's gift um, shift because at the level of my resurrection of my divine inner child, which is the spark of God returning home, that is what I will see, right? Just like how many times for your own children, did you go and move mountains for them and change things and give up things and rearrange things and in the background of their reality? And they stepped into the next scene, which mommy and daddy have been busy packing and finding the new home and figuring out how they're going to pay for it and doing all the things and all the child needed to do was wake up and get in the moving truck. The universe is working on your behalf as mom and dad if if you have moved out of fear. Because if you have not moved out of fear, you will feel a lot of hurry up and wait. You will feel a lot of conflict within your own being. You will feel a lot of struggle, a lot of anger and disgust will be brewing in your consciousness. A lot of um, uncertainty and unawareness. You will have dysfunctional parents because that is what you are creating in your own theta state. So based in the dream that you choose to have will be step logically stepping into the next step of your new incarnation because you will be a new version of you which is what what our beloved was talking about in this delicious book but at the same time you have to understand that it's all metaphorically you cannot take the words written in our spiritual text and look at them as a one-to-one -one, this is how it's going to happen you don't need to know that the poles are shifting you need to know where you are. You need to know how you are vibrating. And the ones that vibrate at the highest peak will be the ones who lay the ground and create the new civilization. The ones that struggle to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, forth will be going through their greatest dark night of the soul and watch their dysfunctional parents that they have created out of the universal threads of creation. They will watch their parents suffer and struggle while they remain uh codependent on what will the system do do you choose to create the new system or do you choose to let it fall and you're saying to yourself well i don't know how to create a new system it's already intact it's already functional it's already vibrating we are in the cleanup stages of this war but it now is saying what side do you choose to be on a side that you've only dreamt of a side that you've only known as a child the side that you have absolutely no proof exists, 
except a tiny bit of faith in your heart and hopefully knowing in your gut or the mind that keeps you plugged down into the matrix that will suck you dry and devour your soul if you let it because this world is based in free will now you may not think that you're giving your free will to fear but every time you use mind to try to figure out what is best for you and your inner child you use fear as another word of doubt so let's go through some words and and behaviors that will keep you connected to the matrix that you will have to watch it, watch the world crumble in front of your eyes or you will step into the next scene your choice if you step into the next scene you let all the camera crew you let the universe figure out how to get ready and all you have to do is sit in hair and makeup for the few hours which is getting you ready for your next grand part to be the guide and messenger of the new world or to be the one who has to act of service to get the new world ready whatever you believe is what you will choose so other words that you can understand that are fear that you don't think are fear is anger. Anger is another word for fear, okay? Fear and anger are the same. If you get angry, you're trying to empower yourself from a place of disempowerment. So if you're getting, if you're getting uh, disgusted, that is another word for fear, okay? If you're in grief, that is another word for fear. If you're in judgment, that is another word for fear. If you're in doubt, fear, loneliness, fear, uncertainty, fear, codependent, fear, unsettled, fear, feeling alone, fear, feeling like you're going to make the wrong choice, fear. This is the food of the dark. So as long as you continue to not take a leap of faith and go for it, what do you have to lose? You're saying, well, everything. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if you hold on to everything you've ever had, you will have nothing. You will have absolutely nothing and you'll have to start from scratch. There's a lot of people who have left the planet since 2012 who could not, ha could not handle the shift of what is going to go through our, our body transitions. Your body will feel it on a visceral cellular level, which is why Jessica is creating this quantum fitness. So she may take you through the deep reprogramming of your physical body. And as she moves through her workshop, she will be telling you how to get it out of your cellular memory this fear that has been indoctrinated for thousands of years into the human body itself. You are not responsible for it, you creating it, but you are responsible for eliminating it. Therefore, when you get rid of this, you will be new, which is all the prophecies are talking about. And yes, what will remain in nature is what is true, what is the, the correct truth of earth. Jessica talked about this in Second Sundays, few years ago has the truth will be exposed and the old cities will be resurrected all of your history will have to be rewritten because everything has been buried and hidden so you would not know just how powerful you were you would not know you were a god you would not know the power that sits in your physical body you would not know the stream of consciousness that you can tap into at any form and create any world you choose if you saw these cities you would begin to remember if you saw the true text you would begin to remember if you saw each other, you have begun to remember. This is why you have all been separated. This is why you have all been lied to and you have false cities and false structures that vibrate in frequency and vibration and trigger your lack belief systems that you need and want, that you need and want. You are distracted to what the underground world has been doing and you have been living a false sense of reality, a false sense of safety. If you've been part of the Tika organization, Jessica has been talking about this for seven years that you were going to have to give up your false sense of security. You were going to have to take the leap of faith into the unknown and choose you, choose your heart, choose your guts and choose this body and what it can actually do versus what it has uh, uh, disallowed you to do in the past. You literally have to give up this old version of yourself in order to see what has already been there. You have to give away the eyes that saw the pain. You have to give away the pain in your body that, it, that went through the trauma. And you literally have to sit in a state of surrender more than you have to sit in a state of choice right now. Because your higher self will help you make the choice if you can reach the state of surrender, okay? 
So hold on, let me see if I missed anything in her question. Um, <laughs> yes, those that are in fear are going to really, really, really move into fear, which means how everybody has been kind of sedative with their fear and they've hidden it with addiction and avoidance and materialism and consumption and judgment over the years. All of those things will be removed. So the fear will resurrect. And especially, especially as you move into this retrograde with this new moon, people, everything is going to be brought to light. A matter of fact, depending on where the fear lines shift, if it doesn't move fast enough for the Galactic Federation, an event will be created in September to move everyone in a quicker format of alignment. It's kind of like getting children to the lunch line and getting everybody through the door. And sometimes we need to pat people on the butt to get them to move. So if you guys are not moving fast enough, you will create an event for yourself in September around the 9-11 point of creation of your calendar and you will be asked to make the choice at that moment what do you choose do you choose a life of heaven or do you choose to suffer in your comfortable uncomfortable conformity do you choose to point your finger at the problem or do you choose to be part of the solution because if you are choosing to point your finger at the problem you are looking in a mirror everything all relationships, people, places, and things are an exact mirror of you. So if we can rise out of fear, utilizing this new energy, which is what is a new moon for you humans, you sit and choose, you sit and surrender, you sit in creation, you sit and decide, you sit in discernment and you allow. You allow the moon and the stars and the unity of the universe to go and form your manifestation that will be birthed in the full moon you're in the perfect retrograde opportunity to do that right now all darkness will be brought to light including your own how you see your darkness is going to be the biggest love or hate program you create if you can look at the things that are coming out of you with grace if you can forgive yourself if you can allow yourself to surrender what you cannot fix within you if you can give your heart to love, if you can give your body to love, this will be like waking up on moving day and moving into a new world where you get lunch on the way and shopping and all new toys and an all new house and an all new neighborhood with all new friends. And it will feel like the logical next step. Or you can kick and scream and swim up river and condition yourself for the new world you will get there eventually because your consciousness is rising the earth her beautiful self is moving into ascension with or without you so as she brightens the light she exposes all the cockroaches which means all of the false realities will begin to disappear all of the truth of what you held on to dear will have to go away and you will have to find new things to love like each other and yourselves. Because the things that brought you joy will be gone if they are not based in source energy. If they are based in darkness as a facade, like your, like your Las Vegas, like your New York City, like these places that are for props to condition and migrate and balance and hypnotize you, you will move into seeing a whole new world otherwise otherwise you will physically watch the collapse because that is what you're afraid of that what you're afraid of you will see that is how powerful you are you can go against the grain of mother earth herself you can go against the grain of the universe itself and you can create a reality of suffering that's how powerful you are so if you're ever feeling unworthy know that you are so worthy that you are so valuable that you can create hell on earth while other people choose to live in heaven. All right. Okay. So remember, you guys, when you're reading these books, you have to look at everything as a metaphor. You don't have to give up this body and start as a baby. 
but you will go back to theta. You will go back to the inner child. You will live as the inner child. You're the rest of your life will be inner child. Inner child being lovingly cared for and disciplined through love and expansiveness through the ego identity who will also return to love because its intentions will be based in growth, not contraction and higher self and inner child will merge. Okay. All right. So let's go back to Michelle. Um, what do you see or feel about the mandatory tracking app? I still haven't come to a place of complete peace about accepting it. However, I'm ready to go out and play. Six months is a long time at home. Is it time? Freedom is a state of being like Mandela in a physical prison, but not in prison. Thank you. Well, just like you have to use the tracking app because you're in the Middle East, you know, we've got the mask. So you have to ask yourself, you know, if you're really creating your reality, if you're really creating your reality, Michelle, and the only way for the path of least resistance for you to, to create your reality on the outside of your scenario is to know that you play the undercover game, you use the tracking app, which is in every one of your phones, you're all being tracked completely 100% of the time. Every smart device in your home is watching you your Alexas, your series, your phones, your internet, or your, your laptops, your TVs. You've never not been watched, but, but, but the higher your vibration, you glitch, you become the glitch. You are unseeable. And because you disappear completely, they're not looking for you. They don't remember you. Have you known anyone that you used to know? And as your vibration changed, you just forgot about them? Oh, yeah, I didn't think about so-and-so forever. That is how it will be. So you never, ever should worry. Ever. You're playing a game of chess. Vibrate higher. Wear your tracking device. Wear your masks. Share love. Share guidance. Share harmony. Share space and vibrate as high as you possibly can. Fear not, children. Fear not. The higher you vibe, the more you disappear. The higher you vibe, the more we, we move this tracking stuff out. This is an illusion that we have bought into. Believe it or not, this wouldn't exist unless we believed we needed to be traced. We would not have any of this if we did not willingly go along and believe that we needed to be monitored, traced, and watched over for our own well-beings. We have created this. So if you go into resistance about what you created, you're going to the mirror and going, I don't like the color of my hair right now. Okay, so change it, but vibrate to a place where you can hold a new frequency first. Vibrate, 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 vibrate. Okay. All right. Moving along. Oh, we might not have time. Let's see what we got. Okay. So I'm just going to, um, there's a lot more. Um, okay. This one's way too long for me. Christine, yours is way too long for me. Um, let's see if I can get a quick one because I got another session here. I'm just gonna talk about the flat earth real quick. Um, you guys, every universe is true to the, to the observer. Every universe is true to the observer. Every universe is true to the observer. And remember how I talked about either in the webinar or in the Q&A about how a collective is created. Enough people believe the same thing, you build a collective. A collective is basically becomes its own conscious being and vibrates and thinks on its own. So if enough people believe that the sky is blue, right, that is a collective belief. If you and me believe in gravity and everybody else believes in gravity, that becomes a collective belief. So therefore we honor that belief system because that belief system creates our reality. So just as for thousands of years, people have 
traveled intergalactically through time space continuums platforms of vortexes and wormholes and black holes and time um, teleportation. There are also there is also a mass mass collective that has witnessed a, a different plane of Earth being completely flat. So it's like, which direction are you looking? East, south, north, west? Because from a different belief system, right? The world is flat. And because I can believe in that so much, I can produce people, places, and things to prove it. I can produce people, places, and things to prove that concept. All right? Now, enough people believe in something, it becomes a real universe within themselves and others, and it becomes viable, and it actually creates a holographic experience. Because these people who believe in this will literally die for their beliefs. And you're going, but hello, the rainbows are round, and from looking down, it's round. And But you're also looking at a holographic experience. So you cannot judge what someone else's holographic experience looks because they might have been looking from a different angle of time and space. And enough people have seen it through that time and space window that it appears flat to them and that's what they believe. So my question to you asking the question of what other people believe is what do you believe and what do you need to believe to build the biggest, wonderful, most happiest reality that you can create? Can we allow people to believe in other things and still get along, right? You have to understand that Earth is the living library. So there are spectrums, species, and beings with consciousness from every place in the universe cohabitating. They're completely together here. All of us here together from different worlds and different times from different dimensions, from different perspectives. And our job is to allow. Our job is to allow your neighbor to create the reality that they choose to live in. And you create your reality so big that your eyes are not on their creation and then they influence yours. You should be out creating everyone else's reality and deciding and discerning what is, feels best for you. Do you choose to see the earth is flat? Do you choose to see the earth is round? Does it really matter? Because I would like to live on the earth that is love. So watch where your questions are going, guys, because if it takes you off of your own paper, some people, as somebody asked me yesterday, you know, like, are pedophiles born like gay people? Yes. Right? They have no choice at a baseline, just as if someone was choosing a different sexual pre preference. Right? They have no choice. Like you have no choice to be a star seed. You have no choice to be a light worker. They have no choice to be born to the dark seed. They were born into that vibration and that is their preference. Right? They are not made they are born just like someone who's choosing to be gay or transgender or bisexual or straight. They're born into the collective vibration that they left off in. Okay, so you have no choice. You're going to do this light work because it's who you are. They're going to do this naughty work because that's who they are until they return to love, until they make amends until they forgive themselves, until they forgive God, they will eat God because that's what a baby represents. They're eating God because that's what it represents. They have so much hate that they are attacking the very thing that they cannot find within themselves. All right, so I'm going to leave it at here. I'm going to break. We're going to finish the rest of this Thursday. Feel free to continue to add if you want to. I will deliver the messages as, as I can. I have to honor my own boundaries here, and I will be of service for you guys uh, next Thursday, all right? Okay, I will see you soon.